Hey everyone, and thank you for tuning in. 30 of the most valuable Throne of Eldraine cards. Before we get into that, I just want to give a huge thank you to each and every one of you guys out there who have made this channel possible over the years, and also to newcomers as well. Without you guys, this was just not possible. Almost 100,000 subscribers. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, from Joey Moss to you, thank you for making this happen. And one more thing, we've changed the name back to Bad Boy MTG. That's right. We are going back to the roots. It was inevitable this would occur. It was only a matter of time. But the change has come, and it starts today. That being said, again, thank you to everyone who does watch. I appreciate you. Let's get into these 30 Throne of Eldraine cards most valuable. What do we have? Starting off with an honorable mention, $22.45. Kenrith the Return King. Definitely going to see play an EDH, Commander, your Brawl, all that good stuff. You can obtain one of these. It's $22.45 currently. All these prices you're going to see in this video um, go based off of market value, the overall market value. So across the board, whether it's, it's calculated by eBay, TCG players, everything is mushed into one and we create a medium. That's how these prices are found. Um, and you can get one of these Kenrith the Return Kings buy a box promo by going into your local game store and purchasing a booster box. They have to be a participating uh, game store and while supplies last. But $22.45, pretty legit. This is a nasty little card here. Let's jump into it. Starting off at the bottom, number 30. The Circle of Loyalty, 6 drop. These legendary artifacts is one for each color, and uh, they all have a way to cheat them into play, basically. They come at a very massive casting cost, but once they hit the field, they are pretty impactful. How much play they're going to see, I'm not sure, but if you're going Knight Tribal, I would imagine this is going to be a card you're going to want to play. Right now, it's sitting at $2.58. Then we have, oh yeah, that's right, I did include in each card the alternate version of it. The, these you can find inside of your collector edition booster boxes, which are fetching a very, very high price. You're looking at about $300 to $400 for a collector booster box. Moving along, Fayborough Elder is a three-drop creature, tree folk, druid. It's got the vigilance, and uh, yeah, Fayborough Elder gets plus one, plus one for each color among permits you control. Tap it for each color among permits you control. You add one mana of that color. It's $2.65. Why does this all seem so familiar? Because it is very similar to Bloom Tender, which is $49.88. Yeah, it is mono green. There's some differences here. But uh, I can see Fairborough Elder. It's hard. I can see it going up in price. I'm not really certain. It's going to be a budget replacement if you're running Celestia colors. Uh, Bloom Tender definitely sees a lot of play in like EDH and whatnot. So I would assume Fairborough Elder is going to branch over into there for the budget minded folks. I don't think Bloom Tender is going to go down in price, though. But really, really cool card. Then we have Torbren, Thane of Redfell. Four drop, $2.78. Got to admire his beard, man. That is quite impressive. More impressive than that axe he's wielding. That's, that's pretty nasty. Very powerful. If a red source you control would deal damage to an opponent or permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus two instead. To deuce four. It was kind of similar to a gutter snipe in some sense. There's only gutter snipes, you know, you have to play instants and sorceries for the trigger off. Or this thing, it's just a source dealing damage. What can we do with that? Well, on your turn one, you play your Scorch Spitter. On your turn two, you play Cavalcade of Calamity. Turn three, Chandra Acolyte of Flame. Turn four, Tobran Thane of the Red Fell. You are going to be on curve and you are going to be annihilating your opponent. Just like that. Turn four, kill. It, it doesn't take that much. Include some math here, and your opponent dies. It's that simple. Then we have Wishclaw Talisman. That's right, Beetlejuice. Tally me banana. No, okay, no one ever gets the reference. Uh, it's a two-drop, and this thing is basically like a demonic tutor, but eventually it does go away. You know, you're going to give it to your opponent, so it's really not. But it does have the abilities similar to that. $2.83. The alternate uh, um, art on it is pretty nasty as well. And, uh, yeah, Ashiac Dream Renderer, spells and abilities your opponents control, can't cause their controller to search their library. So you basically get to tutor up one card, any card you want, by removing a wish counter, then give it to your opponent as long as Ashiac's on the field. They can't even use this card. They can't use Talisman. It just says bye-bye to them, you know, and it just sits there. But maybe just destroy it or something, or maybe it'll just, you know, collect dust. Who knows? Next, we have Bone Crusher Giant 3-drop, $2.93. One thing I noticed, I have to point out about this set 
the prices on these cards are higher than than previous. Like I remember making top 20 and there were cards in the $2 range, like $2.15 for past videos. This set, I'm doing 30 and they're all like 250 and up. I mean, th there's a lot of value in this set. I'm not sure about the print run on it, but it's pretty redunculous what I'm seeing already as I went over and made this video. Just, just keep watching and you'll see what I'm talking about. The value is crazy. Bone Crusher Giant's a very powerful card. Damage can't be prevented this turn. Stomp heals two damage to any target. This can shut down some builds. And also, it's basically acting like a fog, you know. Um, damage can't, but, or, you know, counterintuitive. Uh, damage can't be prevented this turn. Stomp deals two damage to any target. That's nasty. If they were to play a fog, you're just like, nah, man, you can't, why are you playing that crap? Get it out of here, you know. Um, really, really cool card. And then whenever Bone Crusher Giant becomes a target of a spell, Bone Crusher Giant deals two damage to that spell's controller. It's a 4 3. I do expect to see a heck ton of play. Harmonious Archon. I thought this card would have a bit higher of a price tag, but right now it's only $3.09. It's a six drop, and it has that ability with the flying. Non-Archon creatures have base, power, and toughness, 3-3. Three, three. And then the, uh, the kicker, when Harmonious Archon enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, 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 one white human creature tokens. So 4-5. The thing that's really neat about this, it, it's, it affects everything. It's a global effect, you know? Non-Archon creatures have base power and toughness. Not yours, not your opponents, not your, you know, your mom's pet, you know, uh, kitty up the street. No, it's everyone's creatures are affected by that. That's pretty nuts. And this card, I'm not sure what kind of play it's going to see. If you could build around it, a six drop is kind of steep, but it is on a five toughness, which, you know, does dodge a few bullets here and there. Pretty cool card. Looking forward to see what it does. Fervent Champion, we already know what this is going to do. Uh, Human Knight, this is going to be your one drops if you're running, was it Mardu Knights? Uh, you're running three colors. First Strike and Haste on a 1-1. One, one. That alone right there is really, really good. But on top of that, whenever Fervent Champion attacks, another target attacking Knight you control gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. That is good. But it has equip abilities you activate that target Fervent Champion costs three less to activate. This card's really, really cool. I do expect night decks to be running equipment cards. If you're not running equipment cards in your night decks, you might be doing something wrong. Call me crazy. I don't know. Maybe we have to wait for next standard after Throne of Eldraine to really get some better equipments out there. But for right now, eh, we're going to have to deal with what we got. <laughs> next, we have Stone Coil Serpent. I was very surprised this was only a 319. But it is a rare, okay? So it is an X. You've got to pay X, and then you put X plus one plus one counters on Stone Coil Serpent. It has Reach trample protection from multicolored that says a lot so anything that would deal damage to this or target it basically you know that's multicolored it's it just it doesn't do that anymore you know uh, an exile spell or whatever that has multicolored you know in its casting cost it, it would not be able to affect this along with some other uh, neat little tricks here but this is really cool stone cold serpent loving the artwork on this i heard people back and forth they like it, they don't like it, I don't know. It looks like it took a bath in, you know, uh, radiation or something. I'm not sure what's going on. Neat card, though. Charming Prince, two drop, $3.38. When Charming Prince enters the battlefield, choose one. You can scry two, you can gain three life. Or the last ability is really cool. Exile another target creature you own, return it to the battlefield under, um, under your control at the beginning of the next end step. So anything that, like, would have entering the battlefield triggers on it would be sweet. Um, now, of course, all the Cavaliers have this. I just decided to pick the Cavalier of Dawn because it's one of the least talked about ones, but it is pretty neat, though. For five, um, you know, you get your Vigilance, and when it enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target non-land permanent. You can do that. Just destroy any one, you know, any, any non-land permanent your opponent has, and they get a 3-3 three, three colorless Golem. But then it does it again if you bounce it, you know, with the Charming Prince when it comes back into the battlefield. Also, Pollen Bright Druid, if, and this is a big if, I do think Proliferate, we're going to see a Proliferate deck. Probably top eight, for sure, um, with plus one, plus one counter splashing all around. Pollen Bite, I'm not saying it's going to include Charming Prince, but it's just an idea to throw out there. I think it's going to be, it's not going to be in Celestia, it's probably going to be Simic. Um, but this is cool, you can proliferate, or you can put a plus one, plus one counter on something, and then you can do it again, you know, uh, their next turn with Charming Prince. It's an interesting little synergy there. Embercleave is a six drop. $3.91. Mythic. Again, I was uh, surprised by the price. I thought it would be a little bit more expensive, but it does have flash. The spell costs one less to cast for each attacking creature you control. So, I mean, 
you got to have your creatures, and they got to stay on the board for this thing to be effective. And then when Ember Cleave enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control pretty nasty. You don't got to pay the equipment cost. It's void of that. And then equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and it's double strike and trample. I was thinking about that, and I'm like, you know what? That'd be really cool with some Rakdos build, Dreadhorde Butcher. And as long as you're running a bunch of cards, you know, a bunch of creatures that are just coming in real quick and hasty like and dealing damage, and Dreadhorde Butcher is really, really amazing for that. Um, and then, you know, when it ends up dying, it deals more damage. You have you could equip this thing, give it the double strike and trample. The cool thing is how it reads whenever Dreadhorde Butcher deals combat damage, not when it attacks, but when it deals combat damage to a player planeswalker, put a plus one plus one counter on Dreadhorde Butcher. So if you had your Ember Cleave equipped to it, it's going to trigger off twice because of the double strike. So you're gonna put an extra plus one plus one counter on it. Just something to throw out there. Pretty nifty because when when this thing gets big, especially like four, four, five, five, you better be afraid of it. I mean, it gets pretty ugly at that point. Then we have Yorvo, Lord of Garenbrig. Uh, Gar- I'm sorry, Garenbrig. Three drop, $4.57. I do expect this to be seen in those competitive mono green builds. Um, the plus one, plus one counter splashing around are pretty nasty. Only thing is, it doesn't really have um, like any other ability. You can make this thing monstrous, but it's only as good as like a great worm that's a 16 16, you know? Only it doesn't have indestructible. But the plus one, plus one counter splashing around, uh, again, in a proliferate build as well. This could get interesting, my friends. Keep an eye on this card. It's probably going to stay around this price point, though. Um, also, here's the other variation of it in those collector edition booster boxes. Really, really neat. I love the artwork on all these. The Cauldron of Eternity. 12 drop. This thing's massive. $5.11 right now. It's probably around the price I would have put it at. Uh, all these legendary artifacts, you're probably going to see mostly played like Brawl and uh, and Commander as well. But in standard right now, if you're trying to bring creatures back out of the graveyard, I mean, this is a cool card to run. I just don't know how reliable it is. I guess if you're dumping a lot of stuff into the graveyard really, really, really quick, and you're able to do that, like I mean, really quick. Like by turn four, you got like 15 cards in the graveyard or something. This would be a cool card to run. Um, it costs two less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. So you definitely got to be having creatures in there as well. And then whenever a creature you control dies, you put it on the bottom of someone's library. And then the three, that's the payoff, pay two life. That two life could get you, though. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate its ability only any time you can cast a sorcery. But if you're only paying three and two life, maybe in like a life gain deck, or maybe like in one of those decks where you have Dracusith and he comes out just swinging, you know, right away at the opponent's face. Only thing is, it doesn't give it haste, though. If that gave it haste, this thing would be rather busted. So keep that in mind. Then we have Fey of Wishes. This is uh, one of the cards that could have been a mythic. Um, like they swapped with this other blue card. $5.38 right now. It is a pretty powerful card. You may choose a non-creature card you own from outside the game. Reveal it and put it into your hand. That's pretty bonkers right there. You can get any non-creature card that you own. That, that's like a lot of stuff. Planes, planeswalkers, artifacts, enchantments. The list kind of goes on there. And uh, yeah, out, outside the game means basically like your sideboard, okay? And then for two over here, you can cast this uh, fairy wizard flying. For deuce, discard two cards, return Fey of Wishes to its owner's hand. It's a one four. I'm really liking that toughness on it, being at a four. It's a fairy, it's a wizard. Two very good tribes there. Gilded Goose is a one drop. $5.83. It does have the flying, and it has when Gilded Goose enters the battlefield, create a food token. We're still uh, going to have to see what these food tokens are all about. But for Deuce, you tap it, create a food token, and then tap it, sacrifice a food. Add one mana of any color, so zero two. This card is basically uh, a real nerfed version of Birds of Paradise. You know, uh, The alpha version, the most expensive version there is, the first printing. This goes all the way back to the beginning of Magic. That Birds of Paradise was printed. Very first set had this card in it. It's going for a whopping $1,368.49 right now. Your Gilded Goose budget friendly is a $5.83. Looking forward to see what Goose can do. This card I did not go over in spoilers, but it's $6.16. Very powerful. Hushbringer's a two drop. That artwork is like something we ain't ever seen before in Magic the Gathering. You got these luscious lips right there on the screen. Along with uh, a new subscriber, hooray, that's right, uh, flying and a lifelink. Creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. So just throwing up a couple cards, you know, for example, that's going to shut down your Cavalier of Night, your Cavalier of Thorns, um, your Yarek, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's uh, it's not going to, you can't do nothing with it. You're probably going to see definitely Commander or not, but definitely in sideboards. I would imagine a lot of sideboards would want to run this. And the really cool thing, it's flying and lifelink on a one-deuce. That's pretty sweet. Look at these lips. Oh, 
The art is just so different. I don't know what to make of it, but it looks like a really cool card. I want one in foil. $6.28, Realm Cloaked Giant 7-Drop. If there is such thing as Giant Tribal, hear me out. If there is a Giant Tribal at some point, and right now in Standard, I simply don't believe we have it. Maybe when we get Theros, you know, the Return of Theros or whatever, there might be something there for us with this card. But Cast Off Alone is a great board wipe. Sorcery Adventure. Destroy all non-giant creatures. And that could be a one-sided board wipe if you're going giant tribal. But it is five. It's not like it's four or three, you know, for a crazy board wipe like that. If it was, it'd be busted. But it could be a thing. Something to keep uh, keep in mind. And then uh, it is seven to bring out. It does have Vigilance. So, I mean, you just board wipe everything and start dropping all your giants, you know, and going to town on them. Pretty neat. Or already have giants out and then hit this. Pretty cool card. $6.29. Rankle, Master of Pranks. I like this guy because he's a little rascal, man. It's a four-drop flying in haste. Whenever Rankle, Master of Pranks, deals combat damage to a player, choose any number. Each player discards a card. Each player loses one life and draws a card. Each player sacrifices a creature. So 3-3. Three, three. I definitely see this going into your Brawl and Commander builds. You know, it's a great card for that. But I just like it on its own. It has flying in haste. Those two abilities are very powerful in Magic the Gathering. This thing comes out, it comes out fast, and then attacks, and can instantly, when it does, uh, if, it, if it's getting through, dealing damage to your opponent, you can choose one of those three abilities. Really, really neat. $6.29. It is a mythic. The Magic Mirror. I didn't have a whole lot to say about this card at first. I really still don't have a whole lot to say about it. Um, you might see... I, <laughs> It's a cool card. It is a, a nine drop, though. You're never going to cast it for nine. If you do, it's probably not worth it to run this. The spell costs one less to cast for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. You have no maximum hand size. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a knowledge counter on the magic mirror, then draw a card for each knowledge counter on the magic mirror. I have a crazy feeling this card's going to go down in price. I really, really, truly, sincerely do. Um, it's another one of those legendary artifacts. Like I said, each color got one. But, I mean, if you're running heavy amounts of instant and sorceries, you know, like in an Is It, you remember the Is It Drake build or Is It Phoenix build, you know, any of that kind of stuff, this might be a route you'd want to go. It's, you know, something like that. It's like a top end. Maybe like have two of in your build. We'll see what happens with it. Emery Lurker of the Lock. This card. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this is one of the cards that can go infinite. I did not break down the combo in here, but if anyone does know it, by all means, please share it. Um, it's a three drop, legendary creature, Merfolk Wizard. The spell costs one less to cast for each artifact you control. That's cool. When Emery Lurker of the Lock enters the battlefield, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard and then tap it. Choose target artifact card in your graveyard. You may cast that card this turn. It's on a one deuce, really easy to remove this thing. But that is, a, again, I hate the word powerful. I use it too much. I do apologize. But this is a powerful card, okay? It really, really is, man. Choose target artifact card in your graveyard. You may cast that that card this turn. That can get bonkers. And it's, it's one less to cast for your artifact. You're going to see this in an artifact build. I don't know if it's this deck build for standards there just yet. It might be. We did get a lot of new artifacts. Um, we're going to have to see. Really cool card. Definitely in modern, we're going to see that same play. Robber of the Rich. That's right. This is Robin Hood right here. Being called Robber of the Rich. It's a deuce drop, reach in haste. $9.60, rightfully so. It is, again, a powerful card. It's similar to Thief of Sanity, somewhat, you know. Whenever Robber of the Rich attacks, if defending player has more cards in hand, then you exile the top card of their library. During any turn you attacked with a rogue, you may cast that card, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast that spell. $9.60 does seem pretty reasonable. It's deuce, deuce. I do expect us to see a heck ton of play. Probably a modern as well, but definitely in standard. Really powerful card, man. Fabled Passage. What is going on here, my friends? It's $9.99. Evolving Wilds. Oh, how the mighty have fallen, baby. You're such a good card. Then we get this Fabled Passage. I'm just saying, if Evolving Wilds was printed as a rare and not printed for the very first time, I know it's, a, it's still a good card. I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, Fabled Passage just took over Evolving Wilds. That's what happened. We have a new Evolving Wilds in town. Sacrifice Fabled Passage, search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Then if you control four or more lands, untap that land. So the payoff would come later, you know, later in the match. It's not going to come in you know, your first, second, third turn. It's just going to act as an Evolving Wild, which is a really good card in Magic. 
Um, but yeah, it's very interesting to see what this will do. I, I just think it's too slow for modern. I don't think you're going to see play there. It has a high price tag right now, but it's the first card of its kind. It's never been printed before until this set. Uh, yeah, it, it could do something, but I mean, in your commander build, you probably want to run this. It's probably almost an auto include because the payoff's so good. You know, um, just bring it out a card right on the battlefield, smack it down, especially for decks that have multicolored. You know, there you have it. Fabled Passage. We did that one backwards. How about them apples? Then we have the Great Henge. This is my favorite card from the set. And I'm going to show you why I think we're going to see Competitive Proliferate deck. It's a 9-drop. $11.31 Legendary Artifact. This spell costs X likes to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. There are ways you can get this out as early as turn uh, as turn 4. I think turn 3 also. Um, but you tap it. Add, no, yeah, you can get it out turn three. Pretty nasty with the Regisaur and with um, the Goose we showed earlier. And there's other ways also um, with other creatures. But you tap it, add two green mana. You gain two life. Gaining two life is going to keep you in the matchups, especially against those burn decks, running them cavalcades and whatnot. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on it un and draw a card. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it and draw a card. There is one card. That is extremely undervalued right now, and uh, it is amazing for proliferate decks. And that would be Rolesk Apex Hybrid, and it would go amazing with the Great Henge. It's only a dollar right now. There are again, the Great Henge is a nine drop, but you can get this out really quick. And the coolest thing about it, tap it, add two green mana. That's already paying. For two of the five mana it costs to cast a Rolesk Apex Hybrid. It's got the Flying and Trample. Apex Hybrid enters the battlefield, put two plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control. And then when it dies, you proliferate, then proliferate again. I see this card doing crazy things. And if you're to do one of those where you just make a copy of Rolex Hybrid, when it dies, you got to sacrifice it, it's dying. You could proliferate twice right there. Boom, boom. You know, the, the, the second it happened. It, I'm just, there's just some bonker stuff going on with this Apex Hybrid, I can see. I'm definitely building a deck around it. It may be, it's probably going to be competitive as well. Great way to like cheapen the cost on this car. Turn four, you're dropping your hybrid. You know, just going to, t watch out. I'm just, watch out, guys. Murderous Rider, $11.24. Very, very huge card here. Very, very powerful. Stop saying powerful, Joy Moss. All right, fine. Uh, Murderous Rider, the artwork on this other version is nasty. Uh, it's very similar to Hero's Downfall, which is $2.43 right now. I think that price did tick down a little bit when this card was printed. It's uh, You're basically getting the Hero's Downfall with a little downside. You know, you lose two life. But it does the same thing. Destroy target creature or planeswalker. Costs the exact same as an instant. Uh, and then on the other side, after you do that, you have the lifelink. When Murderous Rider dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library to deuce three. I like this as a zombie knight. Oh, zombies, I wish they would have made a, a top eight appearance, but they just didn't have it, man, over the past couple years. It's been a while. Uh, again, great card, great card. We'll see a lot of play. Once Upon a Time, $13.23. It's a deuce drop, instant. If this spell is the first spell you've cast this game, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. That's legit. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Artwork on this is Breathtaking to Say the Least by Matt Stewart. $13.23. Believe, from the moment I saw this card at first, I was in love. And I think a lot of us were. It's going to branch out into all formats. It's a really, really, really good card for what it does. Um, looking at the top five cards of your library and then revealing a creature or land card from among them, put it into your hand. And the, the fact that you may have the chance not to even uh, spend mana to cast this thing. Do it for free. So you can basically fix up, you know, the top of your deck. That's really, really, really good, guys. Get what you need right away. This is what Mono Green needed to be competitive, and it got it. Garuk Cursed Huntsman. Garrick is back. He is at $13.23. Now, I don't have the price tag, guys, on these cards, on the um, alternate versions in the collector booster boxes. There was, there was no data that I felt was trustworthy to go by prices were all over the place on these ranging from like you know 250 bucks all the way down to like 50 it was it was just too hard to judge so that's why there's no prices on these other cards but do expect them between like double triple the price maybe in some cases quadruple how the japanese booster boxes were um for war of the spark possibly you know with the alternate arts 
might see some some nutty stuff like that. That Liliana one is like still over eight hundred bucks, like a thousand dollars for the alternate foil planeswalker uh, art of her. Pretty nuts. Garrick is really cool. Um, he's creating them two two black. Uh, Green Wolf tokens, minus three, destroy target creature and draw a card, but it's minus six is where it's at, man. You get an emblem with creatures you control, get plus three, plus three, and, and have trample. Remember, proliferate's a thing that also can uh, put plus one, or can also put a loyalty counter on your planeswalkers when you proliferate. Very, very cool stuff indeed. I like the art. I like how the wolf's popping out over the back here on the green mana symbol. You don't see that all the time. Then we have the Royal Scions, three drop, $15.22. Will and Rowan. Ken and Barbie, baby. Welcome, Ken and Barbie. They are back at it again. They first made their appearance in Battle Bond, and uh, here they are to stay. They're probably going to be in the format for a while. We're going to see different versions of them. But it's a three-drop Will Rowan, plus one draw a card, and then discard a card. Nice loot right there. It's other plus one target. Creature gets plus two, plus zero, and gains first strike and trample until end of turn. That's a doozy. Giving something first strike and trample. First strike is powerful alone. But giving it trample on top of that, so even if they chump block... With a 1-1, one, one, you know, you, and you first strike kill it. That trample damage is getting through somewhere, you know. You want to use this on something that gets really big and just goes to town, you know. Minus 8, draw 4 cards. When you do, Royal Science deals damage to any target equal to the number of cards in your hands. Legit, man. Brazen Borrower. Brazen Borrower. I was impressed by the price tag on this, but then again, I really wasn't. It's a power... It, stop it. It is a great card. It is an, an amazing card, okay. Mythic? I don't think so. It should have been rare... And uh, they definitely jumped the price up on this thing like crazy. Um, not, for a good reason, though. Return target, nine land permanent, and opponent controls to its owner's hand. Anytime you can just kick something back to someone's face, usually that's a spell on its own, you know? You pay two, uh, and you return something to the owner's hand, and you can scry one maybe or something, you know? But that's built into this card. And then on top of it, you get the perk where it's a creature as well. Got the flash, flying borrower can block only creatures with flying that is the downside on this but in competitive simic flash is where you're going to see this and it is going to be annoying it is a good card don't underestimate this card and the alternate art on it breathtaking i must have i want the foil version of this um, I did see a price going for, uh, I think it was $49. Someone was selling, uh, you know, had one of these listed. They obviously don't have it yet, but that's what they're asking for it. Non-foil version, too. Uh, cool card. Great, great card. Going to see a lot of play. Oko, Thief of Crowns. Peter Pan, in other words. It's a three drop. This card is going to be all over the place. The next great three mana walker. I got crazy and said that. I did, I did. It's true. Good reasons, man. He's got everything you need on it. That creating a food token for the plus two. The other plus one target artifact or creature loses all abilities and becomes a green elk creature with base power and toughness 3-3. Three, three. Not sure how often you're going to use that. If you're using this, you're probably going to be using and abusing it for the food tokens that you can create. And also the minus five. Exchange control of target artifact or creature you control and target creature and opponent controls with power three or less. Good stuff. Cool art. Loving the flavor of this entire set. Which brings us to Questing Beast, a four drop. Legendary creature beast. This thing is going to be feared. Run, duck, and cover. Questing Beast is nasty. Vigilance, Death Touch, and Haste. Any one of those is powerful. Any two of these is really, really good. Three of these, I mean, you're giving them the death stroke, man. And then on top of that, Questing Beast can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. That's nutty. And then combat damage that would be dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. And then whenever Questing Beast deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker that player controls. <sighs> this thing's bonkers. $18.67. Yes. Uh, and now we can see the actual artwork on it more detailed here. Looks pretty cool. It looks like, like some beavers or something that you know are like all mixed up hybrids. I don't know. It's, it's, it's some pretty weird stuff going on there in that card. But cool nonetheless. Um, who was the artwork on this? Igor, Igor, well done, my friend, well done. Explain to us where, where, you, where you were at during this creation. Okay, this is going to be one of those cards, if you're running green, you're going to be running this. Uh, three or four ofs in every single deck, probably four ofs. I mean, you, it, when this thing does die, yeah, it dies to removal. That's true, my friend. But it does a heck ton. Uh, it goes right in for the kicker, uh, right to their face, man. And uh, if it does get through you are then basically killing off one of their Planeswalkers, too. You're putting your opponent in a situation they don't want to be in. 
Thank you so much, guys, for tuning into this one. Uh, this was probably one of the more longer videos I've ever done uh, when it comes to putting you know together this whole production here. 30 cards. Wow. Um, and again, thank you. Almost 100,000 subscribers. If you're not subscribed yet, I hope you are by the time we hit 100,000 subscribers because I'm sure I'm going to be giving something silly out to a couple of you at least. And uh, yeah, great way to help support the channel. Be a subscriber. And uh, yeah, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you take the time to hit the like button. I don't say this in many videos because I think it's just like kind of whatever, you know, people get sick of hearing that. It's a typical thing you hear from any YouTuber. But it is very important that you do take time and hit that like button if you did enjoy it. it takes you a second. Thank you guys very much. I'm Joey Moss with Bad Boy MTG. Skadoosh. Are we off?